the 20s were great. There was a lot of tears. <laughs> um, there was a lot of lessons, a lot of growth, a lot of really amazing happy moments. Welcome to Therapy Explained, where we explain, demystify, and destigmatize mental health and mental health treatment. My name is Denise Pleiner, I'm the therapist of color for people of color and your very own mental health cheerleader. Every video comes with its own cheat sheet that I make available to you on Instagram, so make sure that you're following me there at Talk Therapy so that you can have access to yours. This week is a little bit different because I am turning 30 on Wednesday and as I'm very excited, I'm also feeling very reflective. I have been a therapist for about six years now, over six years now. <laughs> um, and that is more than half of my 20s. So I was reflecting on some of the things that I've learned both as a therapist and the things that I've witnessed with my clients, but also the things that I've learned through my training and my education, but also the things that I've experienced as a 20 year old, the things that I've lived through and the lessons that life has taught me in the past decade. So here are the 20 things that I learned in my 20s. Number one, we don't learn from experience, we learn from reflecting on experience. In my early 20s, I was making mistakes or making decisions that were uncomfortable for me. I was having experiences that made me sad, scared, angry, just things that I regretted. And because I regretted them and because they were emotionally uncomfortable, I ignored them and just let them pass me by. But that meant that what I was doing was I was keeping myself in those patterns because I wasn't reflecting on them. So the moment that I started to reflect on what was happening for me, even though it was uncomfortable, that's when I started gaining that self-awareness and that information about the decisions that I was making and the consequences that that was having on my personal relationships, on my life, and on my mental health. Your environment also affects your mental health. So in my early 20s, as I started to build that self-reflection, I wanted to make progress, like big progress, and I noticed that I wasn't. And even though I was really working at it and trying, the people around me, the environment that I was in wasn't conducive to that. I was going back to patterns and dynamics that really were not healthy for me. So when I started to also notice the people that I was allowing into my life and the situations that I was allowing myself to get into, once I started noticing those and then changing those to align with what I really wanted, that's when I was starting to make much better and much more measurable progress than I was initially. So once I noticed again that my environment played a big role in my progress and in my mental health, I was actually able to change that for the better. Number three, let go of what you cannot control. This is a hard one. <laughs> letting go is really layered. We have a hard time letting go because we might feel like we're giving up too early or we're afraid that we might be giving up too early or we're afraid that that means that we are failing at something that we should be good at or that we are failures. And it just, it's so complicated that that makes it really hard to learn and then to practice. But once we start really learning that other people's feelings, thoughts, behaviors are completely out of our control, then we can actually refocus on the things that are. And for me, what I noticed was that taking care of myself and thinking about how I was going to respond to situations and people was more in my control and that that was what benefited me the most, I started to actually do that and my life just felt lighter. I was less stressed and less anxious because I was focusing on the things that really were in my control, which again is taking care of myself and how I respond to my environment. Number four, communication is the heart of all relationships. This applies to family, friends, work, partners, all relationships. I was not happy in my early 20s. I had an idea of how my relationships were supposed to be. And because my relationships were not meeting those expectations, I was frustrated. But when I noticed that the way that I communicate 
shapes my relationships that if I don't say what my expectations are, what my needs are, what my wants are, then I'm not going to have them met. Then once I noticed that, that's when I started to change my relationships when I told people what my expectations were, when I communicated to them and I, rem and I maintained both of us accountable for them, that's when things started to shape and look more like what I wanted and what I felt were, was fulfilling for me, was happy for me and was healthy for me. Number five, love is not hard. Now, this doesn't mean that love doesn't take hard work right? Or that relationships don't take hard work, but that love itself shouldn't be painful, uncomfortable, or scary. Love should feel safe and healthy and happy. It should be secure. So love itself is easy. Yes, relationships take work, but love itself shouldn't. Number six, if you want different, you have to do different. As you're gaining knowledge and information about who you are and what you want, we also want to start to hold ourselves responsible for those things. Like I mentioned, our environment is important too, right? So if I wanted to shape my life to be a certain way, what I learned in my 20s was that I actually have to practice those things. So if I don't want certain things, behaviors, or people in my life that aren't healthy for me, I actually have to practice my communication skills and my boundaries and my coping skills. Like I'm ultimately responsible for changing my environment and changing the things around me in, in whatever way that I can. Now granted, I understand that some of us have different privileges and different access to things, but as much as we can, that is our responsibility if we want something different. Number seven, baby steps still move you forward. Now, I talk about this in all my platforms, <laughs> on Instagram, here on YouTube, I talk about it on my podcast. So anywhere you see me talking, I'm talking about this. And it's because things that feel small usually are big, first of all. They're not baby, baby steps. But even if they are, even if you feel like it's just one small movement, it's still one small movement. It is still progress and it still counts. And the more that you give yourself credit for these small movements, the more momentum you will keep up so that in the long run, it will snowball into bigger and bigger things. Number eight, surviving is not living. We're taught different dynamics and patterns from our childhood, right? There's a certain kind of expectation and idea of the way that life is supposed to be and how you're supposed to act and what you're supposed to expect from the world. And it is super easy for us to stay in our patterns that might not be healthy and might not make us happy. And I hear this from some people, right? Like my parents were fine or they, I'm fine, I'm all right. And, and that's true, you, you could probably, I could have stayed in my patterns and probably just been okay but would I have been happy would I really feel like I'm living and that's the difference once I learned in my 20s that sure I could survive and I could just get through be miserable at my job and maybe have people in my life that I don't really be fulfilled by sure I could totally do that but then I'm going to be cranky or depressed or anxious. I'm not really going to be happy with my life overall. And the thing about it is that sometimes we don't even notice how much it's affecting us until maybe we take a break or we start making those changes. It will come out one way or another. If you're unhappy or uncomfortable or really just trying to get by, it'll come out in some way, whether that's your mood, your mental health, your body might feel uncomfortable. So yeah, you could just get by. But in my 20s, what I learned was I didn't want to just get by. I really wanted to live and to build a life for myself. Number nine, not everyone will like you and that's okay. <laughs> Something that I learned even now, technically I'm still 29, so that counts as my 20s. I heard somebody say, you know, you're not everyone's going to like you in the same way that you don't like everyone. Right? There is someone out there that you don't agree with or don't necessarily want to be around. And it's not like personal in that way where you're like, I really hate this person. It just is, I just don't click with this person. And that's okay, right? Everyone is so unique and that is the beautiful thing. We all have different beliefs and values and opinions and we're allowed to have those things. And so 
because we have different values and opinions and beliefs, at some point that is going to clash with someone else and that's all right. It doesn't mean that we are not still kind, lovable people deserving of respect. It just means that we're different and we have different beliefs and opinions and that is okay. We don't have to be in each other's lives and it doesn't reflect poorly on either one of us. So when I started to allow myself throughout my 20s to just be myself, even if other people might not like it, I found a lot of freedom in it. I mean, I definitely want to show my best self to people, but it's still myself, right? It's still authentic. And that's all that I can do, right? That's all that's in my power, just to show up authentically and be myself and everything else is out of my control. Number 10, you deserve to go after the things that you want. Dream big. Now, in my 20s, I think I was still carrying a lot of that, like people who look like you or people who are immigrants like you can only accomplish so much. You can only get so far. While my parents were actually really supportive and encouraging, I was still getting messages from other people around me that kind of dimmed that down a little bit for me. But when I kind of broke through that and let myself dream big, I noticed that I was actually accomplishing these things, you know, and not to say that I didn't have any imposter syndrome, which is really normal, particularly if you've seen my imposter syndrome video, there's something about the messages that we receive about, you know, the expectations for someone who looks like us and comes from where we are that can make it difficult to believe in ourselves sometimes. But again, in my twenties, when I broke through that, I was like, I'm just going to go for it because I have people who are cheering me on and then it turned out that I can. So if I can let that lesson or pass that lesson on to you and encourage you to just try and go after the thing, then I think I've done my job. So go after the thing. Number 11, success is not a finite resource. So by this, I mean that success isn't like there's only so much success that can go around right? It's, it's infinite. Someone's success doesn't take away from yours. In my 20s, I always felt like when someone accomplished something that that, that meant that I was super behind and that, oh my God, it's run, success is running out and I need to hurry up. But it's not true. <laughs> I felt really bad about myself for not accomplishing things and it was totally okay for me to take my time because where I ended up is amazing and I love my life and I love the journey that it that I took to get here and when I started to accept that in my 20s it got easier too you know that okay someone else accomplishing things doesn't mean that I can't accomplish it it's just going to look different for me it might happen at a different time for me and neither one of those is better or worse number 12 success means different things to different people Okay, so while we're in the subject of success and people wanting different things and having different opinions, this is another one of those. In my 20s, I think again, you know, when we're young, we receive messages and ideas about how your life is supposed to be, whether that's married with kids or a boss at some corporation or whatever, you know, getting a doctorate, like that's success. No, <laughs> throughout my 20s, because I also saw people accomplishing things and being happy, I realized that that's what it is. Success is what makes you happy and whatever feels best and most comfortable for you. And that's okay. Number 13, I can choose myself and that's not selfish. Boundaries. And this is hard, especially being a person of color. Like you just feel such a big responsibility to the people around you, to your family. And it's hard to say no. And that feels like you're being mean or cold and selfish. But as I was growing up, I realized that when I said no to things that I wasn't happy with, that I just didn't have the room or time for, I started to invest my time and energy into the things that meant a lot to me, the things that were important to me and the people that were important to me. So I was more present with my, in, in events and with my friends and with my family. And that just helped me develop the kind of relationships that I wanted overall. So even though it feels counterintuitive, it feels like it's the opposite to say no. 
it actually is what helps you build good relationships because you're prioritizing your own needs, making sure that your cup is full before you can pour into someone else. Number 14, you know what's right, you just have to listen. Surprise, I look a little different. <laughs> so as I was editing the video, I realized that my memory cut ran out and it cut off right at this number. So number 14 is gonna look a little different and then we'll go right back to what I originally filmed. But number 14, about listening to what is right. In my early 20s, I realized that my body was telling me from the start what felt safe and what didn't. I did feel uncomfortable and I knew in the moment when I was making decisions that they weren't the best for me or that they might not turn out so well. I knew when I was choosing people that were not right for me or when I was allowing myself to get into situations that just were not the best. I knew it in the moment, but I didn't listen. And the reason I didn't listen was because of what I had been told by other people was the right thing or the fear of what other people might think or say, or sometimes even fear of being alone or of worst case scenarios that I was coming up with in my head. And the moment that I started to break through that and really listen to what my body was telling me about what felt right and what felt safe, I was able to follow the things and build a life that truly made me happy and truly did feel safe for me. Number 15, it's usually not about you. Now, we are the protagonists of our own stories. So we are very much in our world, right? We know all the little details about our lives, about what's happening and what isn't, and that goes for everyone else. Everyone has all these other things that are going on for them. So when we come into contact with another person, their response and their reaction tells us a lot more about where they are at and where they're coming from than about us. So even if we're being disrespectful, which is not okay, and someone else ends up being extremely disrespectful, it's probably because of where they're at. They might be experiencing a lot of stress, anxiety, or something's going on for them. And it really isn't about us. And if we're being nice and someone is rude to us, most of the time, again, it's not really about us. It's whatever's going on for them. Now, this doesn't excuse people's behavior, but it's also helpful for us to know that, you know, it's not us. We're not horrible people who keep pissing everyone off. Right? It's important for us to be mindful of the role that we play in whatever dynamic we're in. And yeah, to have like an honest reflection on that. But we we'll also remind ourselves that someone's big, big reaction tells us again more about where they're at than about us. Number 16, curiosity is key. Mm. This is actually something that I learned just being a therapist, and that is not being too concerned about the what and more concerned about the why. And this applies to your feelings that you might be having that are just kind of uncomfortable, like anger, sadness, discomfort, other people's behaviors, like whatever's happening for you, being curious about it. Where is this coming from? And what is my body, my mind, or the other person trying to tell me about what's happening and trying to listen to that. Being curious also means allowing ourselves to explore and to experiment and to make mistakes. Being curious is what helps creativity. It's what helps us learn more about ourselves too and the world around us. So the more curious that we can be, the more information that we get about our world, about ourselves, and the lighter that we can approach things. Number 17, self-love is truly the best love. Again, these messages from society. <laughs> um, this is why intersectionality is so important, right? All parts of your identities are important because the messages about all of those identities are going to play a part in the way that you look at yourself. So I was socialized as a woman and I identify as a woman and the expectations that were set upon me, even from early age, not just in my twenties, was that a woman had to be a specific thing in a specific way. And if I wanted to be successful, that's what being a specific way of 
you know what success was and so whatever things I was aiming for these were all messages that I got from the community that I was a part of the society that I kind of grew up in and the culture that I was um, absorbing and kind of like being in with like media movies you know all that stuff so all of those messages kind of made me feel like I wasn't enough like there was this bar that I had to meet and it kind of kept moving around so I could never really reach it but when I started to really go inward and get to know myself and accept myself for who I was and who I am that's when things got less complicated that's when things got easier because I wasn't going for this bar. I wasn't trying to do the thing that society, communities, whatever was trying to tell me was right in any of my identities. I was those things just by virtue of being those things. I identify as a woman. I just, I now am that thing, right? I am a therapist and there's no right way. I mean, ethically, legally there is, but that doesn't mean that I have to, you know, wear you know, suits all the time to be, you know, accepted as such or whatever identity I need to be. I can just be myself in them and they're still a part of who I am. And that helped me feel so much happier, so much lighter. And I realized that there's no one else that I would rather be. I love being myself because I know that I am enough. I am a lovable human being and there is room for me in this world just the way that I am. I am accepting myself and that is enough. Number 18, everyone is trying to figure it out. As a kid, you feel like grown-ups have it all figured out and they know where they're going and everything's good and settled. But throughout your 20s, you realize that like nobody does. <laughs> we're all trying to figure it out and we're all trying our best. And if you feel lost in your 20s, that's what your 20s are for. To figure out who you are and what you want and also throw away all those like timetables. Again, success is what you want it to be. This is your journey and you get to decide that. When I started to allow myself that freedom, again, everything feels lighter. <laughs> Number 19, being a part of a BIPOC community is something to be proud of. And when I first moved to the US, I didn't speak the language and we weren't necessarily assimilated. We didn't really like fit into the culture and American culture. So, I mean, I was like eight years old listening to like Juan Gabriel and Julio Iglesias and watching telenovelas and I didn't know who like NSYNC was or Britney Spears, you know, I didn't grow up listening to those things. And I was embarrassed as a kid about that, you know, that I didn't know, I wasn't like in the know, like all my classmates and I... My mom made me wear a uniform to school, even though no one else did, but that was a, like a, I guess like a suggestion or probably like a requirement at my school, but I was the only one who wore a uniform all five years and my mom made me do it. And then I would also get a uh, lunch from home. So I wouldn't eat lunch at school. And that made me super different because it was like Mexican food. And I just stood out so much when I was younger and I hated it. <laughs> I didn't like being so different from everyone else. I just wanted to fit in. But the older that I got, and especially in my 20s, I just kind of, instead of running away from it, I ran towards it. And I'm really able to find myself and feel more comfortable in my skin and be proud of my language and my cultural my culture and my differences and appreciate them for what they are and they make me who i am and like i said i i wouldn't want to be anyone else so if you're in your 20s or younger than that and you feel like you're standing out like a sore thumb it's okay it's good to be different it's good to be yourself and over time you realize how amazing it is to be you Number 20, people are incredibly resilient. Now this is something that I've learned as a therapist because I have witnessed people live through the most excruciating things, physical and emotional. It just is amazing how much people can survive, how strong people are and that will to live and that hope. And it gives me hope when I see anybody struggling. I know that it's possible to survive it because I've seen it. And this is also something that I've experienced. 
I can't tell you how many times I've had to start over and I'm only 30 years old and I feel like I probably had to start over like two or three times where my life has felt like it's completely fallen apart or you know whether that's because of the dynamics that are going on for me or emotionally something big has happened for me and it feels just like the worst thing that can be happening to me and I've survived it. I've survived it, I've gotten myself through it, and that is what gives me strength. To know that I got my own back, I can be there for myself, I've gotten myself through things before, and I know that I can do it again. So whatever happens moving forward, I know that I got this. So listen, my 20s were quite an adventure. <laughs> and if I were to leave you with a big message is to enjoy it. Uh, this is such a wonderful time again to explore to live to experience go after the things and I know that you're capable we all are you know it's okay to ask for help that should probably be like a bonus lesson that I've learned is it's okay to ask for help um, but 20s are such an amazing amazing decade I've learned so much and I can't wait for what my 30s are gonna teach me. I'm in a very different place in my life than I thought I was gonna be at this age and I'm thankful for it and I have no idea what my life is gonna look like five years from now um, and that's a good thing. I'm actually excited about it. Um, I'm gonna clue you in as to what specifically I mean by that as time goes by and things kind of unfold, but I'm excited. The 20s were great. There was a lot of tears, <laughs> um, there was a lot of lessons, a lot of growth, a lot of really amazing happy moments. I mean, I, I got married in my 20s, I got my master's in my 20s, I started my private practice, this YouTube channel in my 20s. So just such amazing things happened for me and yeah, you know, it was balanced for sure because there was also pain and, and fear and sadness and all of that stuff happened too. But that's the beauty of life, right? It's a mixture. It's never all good or all bad. You know, we live in a world of and. So thank you for watching. I know today was a little bit of a little bit different. If you enjoyed videos like this, please give this video a thumbs up so that maybe it'll encourage me to do more videos like this. I really enjoyed it. Like I said, if you did too, make sure to subscribe so that you can get more videos about mental health and hop onto Instagram. I'm going to be sharing some of these lessons. See you in the next one. Take care and remember, I'm always cheering for you.